I remember at one point while I was living with my boyfriend that the conviction started coming back. And whereas before I could feel completely fine pursuing what I was pursuing, God wasn't letting me get away with it anymore. And I couldn't ignore the sense of guilt that was coming over me to the point where I went a couple times to him and said, I don't think I can do this. And even though I ended up trying still further to justify things, that was the beginning of me coming out of my lifestyle. Well, I grew up in a Christian home and really everything I could have wanted spiritually as far as a loving family and a good environment, it was all there. My dad is a really godly man and set a good example for me. At some age when I was younger, my mom really encouraged me to start into music and I started playing piano and then she felt like maybe the cello would be a good instrument for me and I picked that up as well. And it was a part of my life that was very disciplined and I felt I could do well with it. And so it became just a real big aspect of my life. Growing up as I did and knowing about God and being taught and then being in an envir several spiritual environments throughout my life and struggling through my own faith a little bit, I got to a point where I felt I knew the Lord and that I wanted to follow Him and do what was right. And a lot of my obedience at that time was more legalistic, just I wanted to live a disciplined life and I knew that things would just go better if I did that. And um, I think it was sincere, but there wasn't a deeper knowledge of God in me at that time. So I went on that way for a few years. I remember that as I tried to live the way I thought I should and even felt drawn to God, that I also felt my own flesh coming into play. And at some point there were some habits I started developing that seemed minor at the time. I was pretty thin and I started overeating, so nobody would have known but it was obvious gluttony in my life and that actually started things for me. From there, it really took over other areas. I started wasting a lot of time, neglecting my work that I had been so diligent about before, uh, school work, things I ought to have done otherwise just began to go by the wayside. And I knew these were taking root and I should stop it, but I never did. I remember as these habits of sin were taking over that the thought of pornography came back to me. I'd been exposed first when we had just got internet. This was even at a younger age and I had seen it, but I never went after it, I think, because I was afraid of my parents who had found out. But then later on, during this time when I was weakening spiritually, I remembered it and I one night just, I think everybody was asleep. I went to the computer and deliberately looked it up. And I started a secret life with pornography steadily growing as part of that life on into college and beyond. What I was viewing at that time when I was starting out in pornography was heterosexual porn. And it was videos or pictures, whatever I could find. And it became more and more a habit until I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I got bored. I just started looking around and at one point found something that was homosexual. And it was different for me. I hadn't been exposed to anything like that from my childhood and really didn't have any inclinations that I remembered before that that would have been homosexual. But when I saw that pornography and I began to repeatedly view it, Something in me liked it. Something was there that wanted to keep going after it. And over time, the habit developed where I actually liked that better. 
When it came time for college, I went to Bob Jones University for my undergraduate degree in cello. But during this whole time, I was still feeding these habits of sin that had taken root, and especially the pornography just got stronger and stronger, till eventually I wasn't even devoting time to my studies or to my music, and any time I had outside my classes was in sin. I went on to the University of Alabama and pursued a master's degree in cello performance also. By the time I ended grad school, any resolve that I had to follow the Lord was pretty much fading away. And there was nothing really at that point to keep me from wanting to pursue my sin further. Because I had never acted out at all homosexually. And now that I had the freedom to do so, I began to be pulled more and more in that direction. To the point where I remember one night, I arranged to meet a guy I'd never met in a hotel and had my first sexual encounter there. That first experience opened up a world of sin to me that I had every desire to pursue as far as I could take it. And I began having multiple sexual encounters, just one after the other, and even sometimes maybe trying to date someone or pursue something more long-term, but really those two years were just years of total promiscuity in my life. At one point my dad confronted me because he could tell stuff wasn't right in my life. And he even got me together with my pastor and said basically an ultimatum, you either leave this sin because he had some idea of what I was involved in, or you leave the house. And I decided to leave home which I really think was the point where God completely gave me over to what I wanted for a whole two years. There came a point in my sin where I wanted to see a future for myself. And really for me, that ended up bringing God back into the picture because I knew He was there. And so I started reading gay theology and trying to find a way to fit God in to what I wanted and what I felt was right. Eventually, I met somebody that wanted the same thing I did, and we started living together and looking toward a future. And this for me, really, I wanted to make it the fulfillment of both my sexual desires and the desire to have something that I could respect about myself. I remember at one point while I was living with my boyfriend that the conviction started coming back. And whereas before I could feel completely fine pursuing what I was pursuing, God wasn't letting me get away with it anymore. And I couldn't ignore the sense of guilt that was coming over me to the point where I went a couple times to him and said, I don't think I can do this. And even though I ended up trying still further to justify things, that was the beginning of me coming out of my lifestyle. I came to realize that this was the fruit of the prayers of all the people who loved me in my family and my close godly friends, praying that I'd come out of the delusion that I was in. There came a day where I finally just packed my things and left. left my boyfriend and went back home and that summer I knew it was had been a work of God in my heart to bring me there and that now I needed to take the next right step. I had been told about Pure Life about a year before by my aunt and uncle and had no desire at that time to go but now God was stirring something in me where I knew I needed to go to Pure Life. When I got to Pure Life, I found a whole different environment from anything I was used to, either in my sin or before, because I could really sense the life of God in this place. And the Lord began to give me a hunger for Him because I saw He was real in the lives of those around me and in the worship. And I was pulled completely in a different direction than all the sin that I'd given myself to. With all the things God was showing me, there came a point where I knew I had to make a decision. 
because as I began to see what I was like and that I was capable of going back, I knew that he was calling me to choose to follow him. And I remember this one service where Pastor Steve basically said, you need to choose to not take one more step down the road of the sin that you're following. And God showed me all in an instant that I couldn't do this, but that I didn't have any excuse because he was there and that he'd help me if I'd call out to him. And it was at that point that I went to the altar and gave up homosexuality. It took the Lord bringing me to pure life and dealing with the sin that I had loved to even bring me to begin to see my real issue that had been with me all the time. And that was just my selfishness and me wanting my own way in life. And when he showed me that, I saw the way out, the way ahead now would be a life lived to follow Jesus. You know, now that I'm out of that sinful life, music has a place again that means something to me. I remember in my sin, I had no desire to work at it and to express something with it because all of that was drained off by pursuing the selfish life that I had wanted. And yet now, music means something to me as a way to praise the Lord and to serve Him. And it still, even then, isn't my life. My life is in God. My life was insane when I was in my sin. I went after every level of evil, from just doing what I wanted, all the way down to basically sex at any time, anywhere, and no regard for what people thought, with a life that just revolved around me 24-7. Everything I had as I was growing up that I had valued, I just threw it away. But now in Jesus, I have that life, and it may be a disciplined life, even in some ways a harder life, but it's a real life and a fulfilling life, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world.